Strobe rockets are simply awesome. However, they are not a good project for a beginner. Some of the chemicals that we work with are particularly nasty and the strobe fuel itself is fairly sensitive. Now, this particular strobe fuel that we're gonna be making today was developed by Joel Harmon and it is simply my all-time favorite strobe rocket fuel. When a rocket is flying using this particular fuel, it sounds like an Apache helicopter flying overhead with bright white and green strobes flashing up through the sky. The strobe fuel that we're going to be making today uses barium sulfate at 15 parts, ammonium perchlorate at 60 parts, 200 mesh magnalium at 17 parts, negative 325 mesh magnalium at 8 parts, and then potassium dichromate at 5 parts. Now an interesting thing with strobe fuels is that we can actually change the rate at which they strobe by just playing around with the mesh sizes of our magnalium. If we uh, use more coarse magnalium in our strobe fuel, the strobe rate will be a little bit slower. If we use a mixture that consists of finer magnalium, our strobe rate will be a little bit quicker. So now let's go ahead and make our strobe fuel. So to get started, let's take our barium sulfate. Our magnalium. and our potassium dichromate and put it all in our baggie. Now we've placed our barium sulfate, our two mesh sizes of magnalium and our potassium dichromate into a baggie. To that, we're going to add our three parts Vaseline dissolved in lacquer thinner to help desensitize the mixture. So we've got our Vaseline lacquer thinner mixture and add it to our baggie and just knead this for a second, just to mix it up a little bit. Now the Vaseline is gonna desensitize the mixture, make it a little bit easier and safer to work with, but it's also going to help the fuel compact more completely within the motor tube. Now we can go ahead and add our ammonium perchlorate to our mixture. Dump it into our bag. Seal it up and just knead it for a minute. Complete. Now it's time to screen our strobe fuel. I prefer to screen my fuels half a dozen times. That seems to produce really consistent results time after time after time. So what we're going to do is take our rough strobe mixture here that we just added the Vaseline lacquer thinner to, dump it out on our screen, and start screening it. Flip our bag inside out so we can get everything off of here. And I'm not grating, I'm not forcing any of this mixture through the screen. I'm just kind of moving my hand around, letting it fall through on its own. The, uh, the first screening is usually the most difficult since you've got uh, you know, kind of a rough mixture. Some of the uh, components are a little bit uh, more damp than, uh, than the others, but it gets easier as you go through the process. Just rotate our baggie to get the rest of the content stuck to the inside walls off. We've got that all emptied out so we can set that aside. And again, I'm just screening this. I'm not grating it at all. I'm just letting the fuel fall through the screen on its own. And again, by adding that Vaseline and lacquer thinner combination to our fuel, it's much less sensitive than it would be if we were trying to screen this dry. And with strobe fuel, it's absolutely necessary add a lubricant to help desensitize everything. And again, I'm 
not grating it. I'm just letting it fall through the screen on its own. All right, now we have completed strobe fuel, let it dry for a couple of hours, and it's gonna be ready to use. We can start using the strobe fuel as long as it no longer, as soon as it no longer smells like a salt.